Hi everyone, welcome to Knowing Nuclear. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the world's first nuclear reactor, a two billion year old natural fission reactor in Oklo, Gabon in West Africa. When we're talking about nuclear reactors, most people picture a large building with some steam towers in the background. So you might be thinking to yourself, how is it possible that there is a nuclear reactor two billion years ago? Well, it turns out that you don't need all that fancy equipment to start a nuclear reaction. There are three main ingredients that you need. The first one is fuel, so in this case, uranium-235. The second ingredient is a neutron, which will split the uranium atom. And the third ingredient is a moderator to slow the neutron down to make the reaction happen, in this case, water. The reaction releases energy, lighter elements, and fast-moving neutrons, which need to be slowed down by the water as well. The mine in Oklo had all three of these ingredients and the perfect conditions for a natural nuclear reactor to occur. The mine would have looked like this diagram. Those black rocks are the uranium ore and the rocks surrounding them are permeable, which means that water was free to flow over the uranium. Oklo's nuclear reactor started when some of the uranium naturally decayed and released some neutrons. The water slowed down the neutrons enough that they were able to hit other uranium-235 atoms and split them. The splitting of these atoms released a bunch of energy, some byproducts, and more neutrons. These neutrons were slowed by the water and went on to hit other uranium atoms, and a chain reaction occurred. When the reaction would be moving too quickly and giving off too much heat, the water would heat up and boil off which meant that the neutrons were not being slowed down, so they were not hitting as many uranium atoms. So the entire reaction would slow down. As the area cooled, more water would flow into the deposit and the reaction would speed back up again and continue the cycle. The Ockler reactor emitted around 100 kilowatts of power. That's enough to heat a dozen homes on a cold day. The reactor kept going for hundreds of thousands, potentially up to a million years and eventually stopped when the concentrations of uranium-235 decreased and the fission daughter products poisoned the reaction. Scientists discovered this natural reactor in 1972 when the French were mining uranium in Gabon. Uranium ore contains the same ratio of isotopes across the globe. Scientists noticed that there was a significant amount of uranium-235 missing from the mine. About 200 kilograms, or almost one third of the fuel a Kandu reactor uses had vanished. Scientists quickly investigated what happened and discovered the ancient reactor. Interestingly enough, the fission daughter products had stayed in place for two billion years. This discovery is what leads us to be so confident that the used fuel from our reactors will stay put in our storage facilities for way longer than we even need. As for natural reactors, they have seen the end of their days. Two billion years ago, the ratio of U-235 in uranium ore was about 3%, and now it's at 0.7% because of decay. This means that the concentrations are too low for a natural reactor to form again. The existence of a natural reactor was really shocking to find, and was a bizarre occurrence because U-235 is so rare. In fact, a lot of our current nuclear reactors need fuel that's actually enriched with U-235 to work. To learn more about why uranium-235 is so unique and essential, please check out Knowing Nuclear's All About You video. If you're interested in learning more about how the Okla reactor makes us confident that we can safely store the spent nuclear fuel in the reactors in operation today, keep an eye out for Knowing Nuclear's upcoming video on the Okla reactor and spent nuclear fuel.